conference is going to give us an opportunity to reflect on uh, what Pan-Africanism means in the 21st century. 2022 in particular, we're going to look at where the youth is and what they're doing. We're going to talk about what needs to be done going forward and um, what's been missing all along. I mean, what's our role as Africa in the overall global play of things. African development. It's a philosophy, it's a way of life, it's a way of being. Togetherness, one Africa. A future for our children. It's liberation, that's it. Change and progress. Collective action. Creating a conducive environment for our people. A common vision to defend African interests. Imagining a world that looks radically different from the world that we have. Solidarity and freedom. Humanity and technical progress. It represents pride, it represents togetherness, it represents community, it represents, you know, owning your own space, it represents freedom. It's really not an elitist, and it cannot be an elitist project. This is really what motivates us. I and mean, what we're seeing in the world um, is really too important in terms of challenges that we are facing as humanity, too important to leave it to governments. So we really need to think people to people, movement to movement, union to union, party to party. That is true, I believe, for the African continent, but beyond as well. We are going to be discussing developing a pan-African agenda, dealing with global issues. Now, I think this is a timely event. I think given what is happening at the international landscape, but also domestically, regionally, and on the continent, I think it is important that we are creating these spaces to have this conversation. South Africa has an important role to play in the conceptualization of a pan-African agenda under new conditions, in building continental institutions, and in acting as a force of example. All of us will agree that the issues are many and they do not lend themselves to easy answers. Our agenda is poverty, inequality, unemployment, poor infrastructure, poor leadership, unaccountability, all the things that you can think of that make it difficult uh, for our people. Now, if we have to talk about that and let's put our agenda, it's also about the economy. And when all is said and done, it is about us. For us to think about Pan-Africanism today, we need to, to think hard about the ecology. We see the deterioration of, of natural resources and with the deterioration of these, of these natural resources, often also a deterioration of the um, respective job, job markets uh, resting on them. Specifically in South Africa, we're starting to see the loss and damage from climate change events and not only events, but the patterns that are emerging. There is a growing water movement, but not only that. There's also a green concern about food and the right to food on the continent. We are defining the hunger problem very narrowly, and we often define it in the context of agriculture, when in fact we may discover that it's located in a certain relationship, and that relationship expresses itself in trade, in investments, in banking, in debt management, and debt services. Many, many uh, countries, in 95% uh, of all countries, female poverty is um, on average double as high as male poverty. And we also know that it is largely rural. We should understand that pan-Africanism cannot exist without African feminism. There's a quote I want to quote by being a Sankarist, of course, um, by Thomas Sankara, and I quote, the revolution and women's liberation go together. 
We do not talk of women's emancipation as an act of charity or because of a surge of human compassion. It is a basic necessity for the triumph of the revolution. Women hold the other half of the sky. Pan-Africanism is about African agency, not just of states, but also of citizens across the borders. We see encouraging signs of this in the women movement, particularly in women peace and security agenda, which in our continent has become a vibrant cross-border movement of collaboration, asserting the vital role of women in peace processes. Pan-Africanism that I imagine in the future is a Pan-Africanism that is not um, articulated only by men, that is not heteronormative and patriarchal in its assertions and in its demonstrations, right? And it is also fundamentally a Pan-Africanism that, that is accountable. As we think about Pan-Africanism and the choices of Africa's prosperity, that it must be indeed rooted on our thinking around ethics. The, the issue about the Pan-African agenda is that institutions matter, uh, whether it is political parties, whether it is governments, whether it is universities, whether it's civil society organizations. I think we need to start reimagining a Pan-Africanism that belongs to people. There are you know, pockets, um, and extensive pockets really, of work that are being done by communities. So you see a lot of these movements that have got very similar and common struggles taking place across the African continent. There's a whole range of activisms, if I could call them that, that people are able to, are demonstrating, yes, through the use of technology, but not uniquely about the technology itself. It's just what the technology enables uh, in terms of almost anybody being able to be an activist in whatever way they can. We are seeing people demonstrating radical uh, appetite, actually, for partnering, for openness and for sharing, uh, for not, you know, questioning where somebody comes from or where the application is going to be, for sharing solutions across borders. The absence of peace and security means that we can't develop, that um, you know, it set our countries back and therefore we need to set an ambitious uh, uh, agenda and hence uh, uh, you know, the silencing the gun. Of course we're in 2022 and the guns are not silenced. So it is about leadership because once leadership takes the decision that we don't want to buy the guns, we don't want to encourage this violence, we don't want to encourage ethnicity, we don't want to encourage all these things. Without that state and that economy being solid and strong, you cannot negotiate with your so-called peers at an equal level. It's a power's game. You've got to get on with it. And so Pan-Africanism must not lose sight of women, must not lose sight of youth, must not lose sight of people with disability, must not lose sight of the LGBTQI. Pan-Africanism must not lose sight of all the issues that create vulnerability for our people. And in bringing people together, it, it helps, you know it, you know, it gets people to analyze the issues, where we're we coming from, what are the lessons we learned. If we call ourselves leaders, we must then be able to ensure that we come together and talk about how are we going to make the necessary change. We're saying we want to go beyond where our forefathers and our fathers were and mothers were in forming the OAU and the African Union and saying where do we take things to from here. Thank you.